So it, where was Marjorie when all this happened? Because this is, it sounds like he, they think, Roger perpetrated it. Right. But where was she? They, they don't think she was there. They think she, she was in Colorado. Right. So the trial was held the following year in April 1978, and it dragged on for two months, which was actually at that time one of the longest trials in Minnesota history. Uh-huh. Mostly this was because of several snafus, one being the, the, the missile, dismissal of a juror mm. who received a letter stating that she would pay, be paid $10,000 for a guilty verdict. Oh my gosh. Handprints were finally found in the bathroom sink, but they did not match Rogers. Wait, in Glenshane? Yes. Okay. Though it was eventually proven that one belonged to a nurse and the other to a detective. Oh. Whoops. Not cool. Shouldn't they have been wearing gloves? Right. Okay. Rogers' defense tried to prove that his arm wouldn't have fit, in, fit through the... God, this is really bad. Through the... Hole in the window, the window of the billiard room. Oh, okay. That's that's kind of strange. Yeah. I mean, did he have very... I don't know. Did he have very fat arms? That very skinny arms? I guess he had really fat arms. I don't know. They tried that this wasn't a really well-planned murder <laughs> by saying that the theft of the night nurse's car was illogical, but that didn't work. After two days of deliberations, the jury found Roger Caldwell guilty of the murder of Velma Piatella and Elizabeth Condon. So I guess they felt they had enough evidence. Evidence, right. Like, I mean, the burden is on prosecution. Right. It sounds like it was questionable. I mean, I, I don't know who did it. Right. But I, it's just, I guess there was much more to it that the jury was able to decide beyond a doubt that he did it. It sounds like a lot of circumstantial it does. evidence, which... It does. I'd like to say wouldn't hold up nowadays, but that's not true. I, you, I don't. I've never been on a jury, so I don't know how that. Yeah, works. I haven't either. But I've, I've listened to a Isn't lot of podcasts. Crazy? I've heard so many of my friends tell me stories about jury duty, and I've never. Right, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, I've I done know. test trial, like uh, done a test jury for like a law firm. Hmm. That was really interesting. Hmm. I'm like. I, I just wanted to do jury duty. I actually kind of interested I'm in it. I'm curious yeah. as to how the process goes. People hate it, but I'm that like... People do hate it. I, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Anyway. Roger was sentenced to no less than 85 years in prison. Hmm. But we're not done yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> After Roger's conviction, Marjorie was arrested and charged with conspiracy for planning the murders. Since she was in Colorado at the time, no one was disputing that she had been at the murder scene. Mm. Now, Marjorie hired a hotshot attorney, and they immediately set out to prove that Roger was innocent, therefore proving her innocent. Now, when the trial opened in 1979, suddenly a waitress in Colorado came forward and claimed that she had seen Roger in her restaurant on the day of the murder, oh. which was the reverse of what she said when Roger was tried. <laughs> Other inconsistencies were brought to light while Marjorie waged a war for the hearts and minds of the jury. She was always bubbly and upbeat. She baked a cake for one of her attorneys when it was his birthday and served everyone in the courtroom. Weird. Which, uh, given her potential connections to poisoning people and animals, mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I would... I wouldn't eat that. No, not at all. Mm-mm. And I love cake, so, <laughs> you know. It takes a lot for Caroline not to eat a cake. Exactly, it does. <laughs> Crazy lady who might have poisoned it? Yeah, okay. (laughs) Maybe. Hmm. It was hard to think that someone so nice would have masterminded such a heinous crime. Well, that's what the jury thought. After deliberating for 10 hours, Marjorie was found not guilty and set free. Hmm. Of course, since Marjorie was acquitted, Roger's attorney filed an appeal. So in August of uh, 18, goodness, 1982... That was the year I was born. I was four months old. A new trial was granted and Roger was released after serving five years in prison. I don't get why those two things are associated. If she's not guilty. They said if she was not guilty. Why does it have to do with him? Right. Because there's still evidence that he did it. Right. They can't just say, well, if she's not involved, he must not have done it. Yeah. They must have, like framed it that way i would think very heavily in the trial to be able to sorry overturn that so he was released after serving five years and the leaf prosecutors were in a bind yeah 
So, if Roger was acquitted in his new trial, then no one would be punished, punished for the murders. Right. Witnesses had died during all this time. And then on top of the new evidence that had been presented at Marjorie's trial, it was looking like an acquittal was a real possibility. Mm -hmm. So the prosecutors cut a deal with Roger. If he confessed to the murders, he would only have to serve another year in prison. Roger quickly took the deal and testified in open court that he'd waited outside of Glen Sheen that night before breaking in. He also claimed to have been drinking heavily, so he couldn't remember some of the crucial details. So he's telling him he did it, and then he gets, he just is in prison for another year, and he, right. legend, he killed two people. Right. That's ridiculous. Yeah, just a bit. I'll stick to architecture. Yeah. I can't know. Now, he said that murder hadn't been his intent. He'd <laughs> hoped to steal some valuables and then mm -hmm. take off after that. Mm-mm. He didn't say anything about Marjorie's involvement, even though she was protected by double jeopardy at this point. Roger was released, and he moved back to Pennsylvania, which was where he was from originally. Mm -hmm. And he lived a pretty hard life for the next few years. At one point, he contacted the Congdons and told them he would reveal the real story if they paid him $50,000. <laughs> Negotiations eventually broke off, and in 1988, Roger Caldwell slit his wrist and died. Oh. His suicide note claimed that he never killed anyone and had never harmed a soul in his life. I feel like that might be the truth if you're intending to kill yourself. If you know you're going to die, why would you write a lot? You know, because if you're not around, then... But on the flip side, yeah, he killed somebody and he felt honest to goodness guilt because he's not a sociopath. Okay. Then he could have killed himself because of that. But yeah. I guess so. I guess so. I don't know. You can go Will we ever way. know? No. I mean, but we're yeah. still not done. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Marjorie was acquitted in 1979. Oh, where was, so where was she when he committed suicide? Okay. So we're getting there. Okay. She was acquitted in 1979. Okay. Roger was in jail at the time. So she moves. I was kind of confused about this. I don't know if she moved or not, but she has friends. Principally, a married couple named Walter and Helen Hagen. Hagen's. Right. right. Okay. They had been friends since the 1960s when their kids competed in ice skating together. Now, Helen had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's mm. and was placed in a nursing home. Marjorie showed up to, a, to visit her, and then a few days later, Helen lapses into an unexplained coma. <gasps> Three days later, she's she dead. She ate the cake. She ate the cake. <laughs> right. Marjorie and Walter are soon married, even though she's still legally married to Roger. And Walter marries the woman that killed his wife? Well, well you can't prove that. Right, okay. exactly. Still. They got married in North Dakota, so there's actually still a warrant out for Marjorie's arrest for bigamy. Bigamy. Yeah, in North Dakota. She's just never gone back there. So, they're living in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But they end up selling the house that they had been living in. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, the night they move out, the house burns to the ground. Oh, no way. Yep. Hmm. I wonder who did that. Right. Hmm. That's when police start investigating Marjorie's past. And what do they find? A string of unexplained fires <laughs> going all the way back to her childhood. <laughs> so she's wow. tried for arson and insurance fraud. But this time, in spite of the use of the same hotshot attorney who got her acquitted before, mm -hmm. she is found guilty and sentenced to 20 months in prison. Wait, for arson? Right. So, we realize that that's more than Roger was given for no. admitting to the murders. He only had to serve a year. Uh, yes, right. he had already But a total of five but years. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, when she was released, she and Wally moved to... Aho, Arizona. I don't know how to say that. A J O. I think so too. Aho. Okay. Anybody who lives in Arizona and knows how to pronounce A J O, please let me know. Mm -hmm. They're living in an RV there. Now this is a tiny town on the Mexican border, hmm. and it was chosen because Wally supposedly had cancer, and they needed to go to Mexico to get his drugs. Uh, for, uh, they could have probably gone to Canada because I think they have that same 
Right. Get drugs for cheap here. Exactly. (laughs) Not too long after they settled in Aho, a series of fires happened in abandoned buildings and garages throughout the town. After getting into a dispute with their next-door neighbor, Marjorie is once again caught for arson after she tried to set the neighbor's house on fire. Of course she is. He happened to be a Border Patrol agent. I mean, oh my gosh. that makes lots of sense there. So she spends eight months in prison because she couldn't make bail. I know Mona. So Mona is, is Adrian's cat. <laughs> And if you hear that weird buzzing noise in the background, that's her purr box. Can you hear it? You can a little bit. (laughs) She has a very, very loud purr. She does. And it's so sweet. That is sweet. She's an old lady. She is. She's She's old. She's almost as old as my Amelia. When you're 16 and you're a cat, you can do whatever you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we spend so much money on them. Mm -hmm. So... Marjorie spends eight months in prison because she can't make bail. Now, during those eight months, Wally made a miraculous cover- recovery from cancer and was back to his old pre-cancer self. Like, you know, before he basically been housebound, couldn't drive himself. But while Marjorie's in prison, he's just driving himself around, flirting with the ladies, having fun. Oh, wait. Wait. Do you want to know how to say Aho? Sure. Is it Aho? I don't know. <laughs> That's not helpful. Aho. Okay. I was wondering. Aho. Aho sounded a little questionable to me. It sounds like it's- somebody from my hometown would be pronouncing it. <laughs> it's Aho. Az. <laughs> but I like that she says Aho. Az. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really funny. Would you like to hear? How you say it in Danish? Sure. Because I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, Aho, but they pronounce the letters A A Z, which I didn't hear. Is it? Is that what I said? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? I don't know. I like this. This is Danish really is basically German. I should spend more time on the internet, you guys. <laughs> it's really interesting. But anyway, now we know that it's Aho. Aho. Really has nothing to do with the story, but I had fun learning how, how you to say pronounce AZ it. in Danish. Exactly. Okay. So Marjorie is released in preparation it's for It's the her. Spanish word for garlic. Oh, okay. I do like that tidbit. Yes, because we all want to live in a city named after garlic. I would. I bet it smells great. Yeah. Aho. Aho. So Marjorie is released in preparation for her trial. I don't understand that. What? I'm still on garlic. What did you just say? (laughs) So she's been in prison for eight months because she couldn't make bail. But then they release her. Because who's going to pay to get her out? Right. So, but then she's released just before her trial. I don't understand why they would release her. Personal recognizance. Possibly. Like, I have no idea. I yeah. just like that word. Personal and recognizance. And I've heard that in a show somewhere. In Law & Order okay. SVU. Probably. <laughs> so, she's released. Yeah. And suddenly, Wally's health takes a downward turn. Oh, that's shocking. To the point that when he... He ate the cake, too. Right. Don't eat the cake. Don't eat the cake. Unless it's chocolate. So he's so bad off that when he testifies at the trial in her defense... Really? He's defending her? Yeah. Wally? He had to be rolled in on Wally. Gurney. Ugh. Wally, what are you thinking? Right. So Marjorie was convicted of attempted arson and was linked to many of the other fires in town... She was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Okay. In a strange twist, she asked the judge... What is not strange about I any of this? Know. So, she asked the judge In a continuation for, of strangeness. Yes. She asked the judge for one day of freedom. And he granted it. Did she go to Mexico? That makes so much sense. She no, and garlic. They basically <laughs> put the local police on her... So she wouldn't run off to Mexico. So the police are basically outside her RV, and one of the officers smells natural gas coming from the trailer. Where she's living. Right. Where she's staying. Yeah. 
So he checks on Marjorie, and she claims that everything was fine, that the pilot light had gone out on the stove. But a couple hours later, Marjorie begins calling friends to report that Wally was dead. Police 